Right You're watching WHEI TV 10. Student programming from the Media Communication Center at Heidelberg University. Good evening, Tiffin, Ohio. I'm your co-host, Henry Bourne, on the first ever Late Night Show. I'd like to introduce your host, from the center of Ohio to the center of our hearts, Mr. Scott Carpenter. How's it going, Tiffin? How is it going? I'd like to thank everybody out there letting us into your homes. And to my co-host, Henry Bourne, the guests we have tonight. We have some great guests on the show. Con Professor Robin Heaton is here. Give it up for Robin. Absolutely. Absolutely. And freshman student golfer Justin Shuto will be on the show tonight. So give it up for Justin Shuto. Uh, Henry, for the first show we do, we do have a lot to talk about. We really do, Scott. We had, we had a Super Bowl happen, ladies and gentlemen. Patriots ended up winning it all, which yours truly predicted. Henry, let them know who you predicted. I predicted the Seahawks, but in my defense... Uh, I've supported them the whole season, so how can I not go with them? In my defense, I picked the Patriots very early on, too. But, you know what? They're, I, as happy as I am that the Patriots won, there's a part of me that still wanted the Seahawks to win. You know why? T tell me why. Okay. Well, the reason that I wanted the Seahawks to win, because they've already been to the White House, and Obama loved them, right? So I thought, you know, if they got to go to the White House twice, they would mesh even more. Obama talked about how great they were. Maybe he wears up on them a little more. And Obama would go into his next press conference in his nice suit, and he'd get asked his first question, he'd say, I'm just here so I don't get fined. I'm just here so I don't get fined. You know what he's saying next at the next press conference? I, I think I know. Yeah, try it. You know why I'm here. You, right. You, say it again. You know why I'm here. I think he said it a total of like 30 times or something. Yeah, that, that's ridiculous. It is a bit ridiculous. It's you know? ridiculous. You know, shout out Bill Clinton. <laughs> shout out Hillary Clinton 2016. What up? <laughs> that's, uh, I think that's the route that was going. But you know what there? That play at the end, the pass from the one yard line when you have Marshawn Lynch, she was like the greatest running back. It was, it was disputed. Henry, what would you have done as a coach? If, if, it was, if I would have been the coach, first of all, I'll never be a football coach. Don't know nothing. But if I had been the coach, give it to the beast. You're in beast territory. Use beast mode, right? I, you are beast territory, beast mode. It makes sense. But, but you know what? There's a, there's a guy out there that is not getting enough criticism for his play call. It's uh, Mark Helfridge. Let's get, a, let's get a tape of Mark Helfridge. Do we have it? There it is. There it is. What is that play call? What is that one? What is no it? That's idea. the special one. That's the special <laughs> yeah. one. That's the spe I See, like I, it. I, I think I'd rather have Pete Carroll just talking in the headset than we yeah. got Mark Helfridge <laughs> out there going like that. Or but, you know, uh, Pete Carroll chewing his gum too. I mean, uh, he he was smacking. He I know. Was, he was it's, definitely it, smacking it, on it. Hey, you know what? It's an intense situation. I don't blame him. Hopefully, it's double mint so that sucker lasts. You know? <laughs> yeah. Double mint will make it last. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but one of the greatest reactions in all the NFL happened. It was Richard Sherman's face after that interception by Butler. And we have a picture of that face. We're going to keep that up right there. There it is. Henry, we're going to name the top things that he was actually thinking in this moment, right. starting with you. All right, here we go. Ready? He sees this happen, and this is, his, this is actually what he's thinking. The teacher just gave me homework, and it's game day. <laughs> there we go. All right. All right, here's another one. Ready? How about when, you're, when you tell mom to pick up one thing from the grocery store and she comes home without it? Oh, that is the worst. Yeah, that, that is the worst. All right, you, you ready? So all I you needed ready? was waffles. You ready? Yeah. It's snowing a lot, and you still have classes. Okay. Now I you like it. I like I, it. They I like see, it. They I see like that it. face. You okay. Like it. So uh, how, about this? how about this? When you've been listening to Coldplay all damn day i feel that yeah i feel it that could draw some tears i that mean, could definitely draw some tears. I, I already i'm already sadder now yeah right, exactly you brought up cold play i'm already a little little sad exactly last one here we go Henry. Right. here we go when someone asks you to be dj and they play macklemore Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> whoa we'll never get macklemore on the show no that's for never sure. mm -mm. anyway um the last one being uh hey does this mean we have to go get Mark Helfridge as a coach? Because I like his play calls a lot better. Ah, there we go. Very good. Awesome. All thank right. You. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's move on. Let's switch sports a little bit. Okay. Uh, as we know, Tiger Woods is back. Henry, he shot one of our rounds the other day. What did he shoot? I believe he shot an 82. An 82. And now he is taking himself out of this recent competition yeah. he's been in. He's and one of the courses he's very successful yeah, at. Yeah, Torrey Pines. He's withdrawn three out of three of the last eight tournaments he's played in. I don't know. I mean, we could talk sports all day, but something's up with that guy. Something's definitely up. But I think I, I think I know what it is. You know what it is? You, they're all saying it's the nerves. He hasn't been in competition. 
honestly, I think he used to put in a lot more work. I think he stopped playing those extra holes on the side that helped him get better. Yeah, I definitely agree. With that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you you got to put the work in to get you know to get it out later. And he used to put it in. Yeah, he used to put it. He in. did. He did. Anyway, other way in our news, Sports Illustrated came out with their swimsuit edition. We have a picture of the cover, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. Absolutely. That's actually Derek Jeter's girlfriend. Is it really? Yeah, the lucky guy. Lucky guy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but in an advertisement on there, there was a first ever plus size model to even be in the Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition. Yeah. And you know what? We got Mark Helfridge's word on it. He said, plus what? <laughs> plus what? Plus what? So I'm telling you that's what? what. That's what Mark Helfridge said. Yeah. And I feel like he's a guy who probably does get Sports Illustrated. He probably looks at it. <laughs> I would think. He probably, he probably takes a gander at it. In other news, Tom Hanks, ladies and gentlemen. Tom Hanks is back in the news. Haven't seen a movie with him recently. Yeah, except Toy Story. But, yeah, okay. well, yeah. yeah. But he went to a basketball game, and he was reunited with Wilson. They introduced Wilson back to him. Really? And, and a lot of guys like me are like, great, now we can finally get an interview. This is the first time in 15 years we've been reintroduced with Wilson. We can finally get an interview where he's not just going, Wilson! Wilson! <laughs> So I mean that's I mean that yeah. just got him now. And, and finally, he at least shaved. Finally, I mean, what he, when he when he didn't have Wilson, he just looked ridiculous with that full beard and everything. It was just ridiculous. that's true. Yeah. With Wilson, I mean, he finally got a shave. Yeah, he looks clean cut now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Henry, we have a segment on the show. We're gonna do this week's pointless video. Henry, what is this week's pointless video? This week's pointless video. It does not. It, its title is very long. It is "Man Loses Fish." Reel and rod. <laughs> that and that, that's about the video, but just just take a look because it is very pointless, but it it is great. Here we go. Fish escapes death right here. All right, there you go. That's that fish nearly escaping death. There you go. Good to him. There's a lot of fish out there that don't get to do that. Now, anyway. now he's always hooked. Yeah. I mean, the whole rod went with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's on, but, but he's definitely on a Sports Center top 10 for yeah, the fish world. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. definitely. Okay, uh, there's a new argument out there that's being studied that open relationships are a lot more successful than uh, monogamous relationships. So. Uh, which, you know, somewhere in Florida, Tiger was jumping off the couch saying, I told you so! <laughs> oh. ah. Ah. So, yeah, Tiger. Tiger back in the news that way. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have a great show for you tonight. Our first guest will be Robin Heaton right on the other side of this commercial break. You're watching WHEI TV 10. Student programming from the Media Communication Center at Heidelberg University. While cruising the streets of Tiffin, you may pass these buildings and places every day. But what you may not know is that hidden between them is a place very special to Tiffin's youth. Here at the Tiffin Seneca Teen Center, we are dedicated to eliminating boredom among Tiffin's youth. We offer a unique place to do homework, hang out, and simply escape the hardships of being a kid. My name's Angela and we're bringing you BergFit to Heidelberg University um, to help the students as well as athletes and staff uh, be healthy, whether they're trying to gain muscle, lose weight, or just have more energy for class. Um, everyone has different goals. We offer pre-workout, post-workout, healthy meal replacement smoothies, as well as many snacks and healthy energy drinks for everyone. I like them, they work, uh, taste good, relatively cheap. Favorite flavor is definitely Twix. Welcome back to Late Night with Scott Carpenter, ladies and gentlemen. This is my host, Henry Bourne. 
And uh, Henry, we watched a ton of football this season. We really did, Scott. Watched a bunch of football. And there's still one thing that gets me every season. Every season, you always see the trash talking. They're yeah. face to face, eye to eye, angry. Mm -hmm. What are they talking about? I, that's, that is a great question. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. And I, I, I feel like we might be able to explain a little bit. I think we can give it a shot. You want to give it a shot? Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I'm ready. You, you, I'll let you start. You want me to start? start? Okay. In the carrot. Here we go. <clears throat> you know, I heard Stacy's mom still has it going on. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I dare you, and I double dog dare you, to have just one Lay's potato chip. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. I dare. I'm oh, dare yeah? You. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? I don't know. But I know she sells seashells by the seashore. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You know what? Yeah. I wish I had Jesse's girl, man. What? I heard Philadelphia cream cheese wasn't even from Philadelphia, bro. That's what I heard. Oh, yeah? That's what I heard. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I'm still shocked at the ending of the Titanic, man. Yeah? Yeah. It shocked me, too. <laughs> but you know what else? What? I still can't believe that Bruce Willis was dead at the end of Sixth Sense. Hey, it's shocking. It's so shocking. I can't believe it. Don't know if my body can still take it. I don't like watching that movie I anymore. I see dead people. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> that is what football players say. You can quote us on it. That is, that is exactly I, what they say I believe to each it. Other. That is exactly what yeah. they say to each other. At least we're just really good trash talkers. I think we are. They probably are. For sure. On the other side of this break is Con Professor Robin Heaton. It is her first year at Heidelberg, so we're going to claim it to the bird with a late night show. Catch that on the other side of this short commercial break. You're watching WHEI TV 10. Student programming from the Media Communication Center at Heidelberg University. In the heart of Heidelberg's campus lies the Fireside Cafe and Pub, featuring a relaxing and engaging space welcome to the public. Fireside's menu includes sandwiches, salads, wraps, desserts, and even a soothing latte or coffee, offering a wide selection of exciting new and wholesome food options. Fireside Cafe Pub also serves a variety of refreshing drinks to accompany its cozy atmosphere. Come experience Fireside's new fall menu and visit us on Instagram at Berg Dining Services. Welcome back to the Late Night Show, ladies and gentlemen, and my first ever guest is Com Professor Robin Heaton. Robin, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Good, good. And uh, your people told my people that you're dealing with a little bit of a cold, a little under the weather? I am. Okay. So, I don't know, if, have you gone to the doctor yet? I have not. Okay. No. So, you might not know this, but I have a very good skill in being able to diagnose people. So, go ahead and list me with your symptoms. Uh, dry, scratchy throat. Dry, scratchy Throat, okay. How graphic would you like me to get? I mean, <laughs> I need the accurate details, so. Um, I've got some congestion. Conge yeah, yeah, yeah. Phlegm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I say phlegm? Yeah, I think, phlegm is, yeah, I think that's allowed. Okay. Phlegm is, yeah. Um, and just kind of a little out of it. I've had a little too much cough syrup. Out of it, okay. <laughs> okay. That's about it. Okay, well, will you, have you heard the phrase, uh, a glass of OJ away keeps the, a glass of OJ a day keeps the doctor away? <laughs> No, I've heard a similar phrase though. Apple? Yeah. <laughs> apple today? Well, we don't have any apples, okay. but but yeah, you can take this home with you. That's oh, your gift. Yeah. Nice. Thank Feel free you. to have that. But it is your first year here at Heidelberg. It's my first year here. And you come from way out west. I do. I'm originally from California, but before I came to Heidelberg, I was teaching at Utah State University. Okay. And what are, I'm kind of curious, because in Utah we think of special underwear and you know, we're not used to it from Ohio. So what was, what was that like out in Utah compared to here? Um, the biggest difference is that the majority of my students in Utah were married in college. Mm -hmm. And out here, I don't have a lot of married students, if any. Yeah. I don't think I have any. Yeah. So it's, it's just a different dynamic. So married at 20 was like a normal thing? Very, yeah, very normal. And is the special underwear a rumor or is that an actual fact? No, the special underwear is a fact. Okay. Would you like me to Please elaborate? Have, Please elaborate, yes. yes. Um, so if you're not familiar with the LDS or the Mormon religion, um, it's part of their, I guess, modesty is that they wear certain underwear underneath their clothes uh, clothes to um, promote modesty, okay. but they're special, they're blessed, they're 
all of these different things, but it's just kind of a modesty thing. Got you. So that's the whole story behind the underwear. Uh, not the whole story. It's as much as I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Got you. So what? So coming to Tiffin, it is a small town. So what was what was the change like for you? I've lived in small towns before. I've actually lived in towns smaller than Tiffin before. I was in a town in New Mexico that was about ten thousand people, and four thousand of those people were students. So this Ooh. was actually a little bit bigger than that. Yeah, in yeah. New Mexico, when the students went home for the summer, the, the town literally closed down. Oh, wow. So, Tiffin's, you know, Tiffin's kind of medium by comparison. It's smaller than, I was in Logan, Utah last, and it's smaller than Logan, Utah. Um, my only complaint is just there are no good restaurants. <laughs> in so, Tiffin? No. Oh, yeah, there's kind of a, you got to go out to Finley. Or yeah, you, something like you that. You got to take so, the cruise, the hike. Yes. Yeah, kind of rough on the gas money, but at least those prices have dropped. Yes. Yeah, that's for, cool. for now. Yeah, we'll gas see. prices are going back up. Exactly. It was broke college kids. It's <laughs> yeah, I was pumped, and now now it's I have no money anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so and you you specialize in interpersonal communication. I do. Gotcha. So tell us a little bit about for the viewers what interpersonal communication is. Um, interpersonal communication just focuses on relationships. So it's kind of the between people. What happens between people? Mm -hmm. So an interpersonal scholar could study um, families. They could study romantic relationships, they can study friendship, they can study coworkers, they can study a large number of things, but it's really just about relationships. Gotcha. So if Henry, so what, you do a little bit with culture too, correct? Mm -hmm. So if Henry got all up in your face and asked you a question, didn't really care about space, what culture is he possibly from? Mm, I don't know. Would you like me to demonstrate? Yeah, ask your question. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. There's a lot of different <laughs> Ron is like, no, don't give a piece of that. Uh, you might be breaking a policy. <laughs> um, there's a lot of cultures that just don't have the same bubble issues that, you know, Americans like their bubble, right? We love our space. We do love, we our, love space. our space. We love our space. And we're very, what are we, time, you know, because I've had class with you before. Mm -hmm. You know, time-oriented. We're very task. Yes, we are slaves to time, essentially. Mm -hmm. that, you know, other cultures don't really adhere to time constraints like we do. So, you know, we... Um, Students in other cultures, nah, whatever, you know, come over sometime, not a specific time. Right. If they say a party starts, and they'll just say, oh, it starts in the afternoon, and it will <laughs> go until whenever. But we're not like that. We're like, no, it's four to six. Absolutely, yeah. I want you there at four. I want you gone by six. So, yeah, Americans are very uh, ruled by time constraints. Yeah, the clock definitely does a lot for it us. It does. So... And I know you mentioned that you live in California. So was California a little bit different of a culture? Were they oh, a little completely bit? completely different. Let's tell us a little bit about California then. Well, um, my first culture shock then was going from California to Utah. Oh. So going from one of the bluest states in the country to one of the reddest, reddest. states in the country. Right. So it's mm -hmm. just, it's, it's a, there are political differences. Um, you know, it's just, it's very, Utah's very conservative. California is ultra liberal, as everyone knows. So legislation about women's rights, um, things like that, got passed very quickly in California. In Utah, it still hasn't been passed. Yeah. So there are still there's still legislation happening that's still not not going anywhere. Kind of brings up an interesting question. And how much do you think, since you've lived all over the map, you know, how much do you think politics has a play on our culture? Then it's a huge. I mean, it's a huge part of our culture. Yeah. And just all the political wrangling that goes on around, you know, uh, election times and and that kind of stuff. But no, politics is huge in this culture. Well, at least we yeah. think it is. Especially around the time you get badgered with the commercials and the well, phone calls. And the, only the phone place calls that has more political commercials than Ohio is hell. So <laughs> I've heard that. Well, I'm actually kind of excited about that because nobody cared about Utah for all of the time that I lived in Utah. Nobody cared. None yeah. of the politicians cared. Because it's a red state, it's going to stay a red state, right. it doesn't matter, you know, who's running as, as the Republican, they're going to vote for the Republican. Mm -hmm. So nobody in Utah cared, uh, or nobody cared about calling Utah. So I'm actually kind of excited to live in technically what's called a swing state or a purple state. Right. Where we so have the presidents coming my visit vote could actually count for something mm -hmm. in Ohio, which right. I'm kind of excited about. Right, absolutely. <laughs> so we're going to flip topics a little bit here, but we hear you have a completely different perception of Disney than the rest of us do. So, And one of the things that struck me was your perception of uh, Beauty and the Beast. So can you tell <laughs> us a little bit? 
<laughs> you're because you're very you know social rights and stuff like that, which is awesome. So tell us a little bit about your perception of Disney, and then a focus a little bit on Beauty and the Beast. Okay, so <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> Before I say anything, I'll just say I'm not anti-Disney. <laughs> I don't think we should stop watching all Disney movies. I but. my childhood <laughs> my childhood was full of Disney. I love Disney, whatever. But you do have to watch Disney critically because it's not the the messages that Disney puts out are somewhat um, I don't want to say subliminal, but they they're almost insidious. There are things getting in your brain from Disney that that you may not know are getting there. So with Beauty and the Beast, one of the things I like to talk about, because Beauty and the Beast was heralded as, oh, Belle, she's smart. She wants to read books. Her head wasn't turned by the the good looking guy, you know, all of those things. And she loved this beast, even though he was literally a beast. So Disney kind of got a pat on the back for, you know, putting this forward. Well, another way to look at that as at Beauty and the Beast is that it the message to women is if you're in an abusive relationship, which Belle and the Beast had a fairly abusive relationship, if you're in an abusive relationship, if you just love him enough and look at what's on the inside, he'll turn into your prince. And so that's kind of a dangerous message. Gotcha. So, and we talked about human perception in class, right? So I'm going to hit you with my perception. Okay. I'm going to say, what if, what if Beauty and the Beast is all about a really rough relationship until the Beast decided, you know, it's time for me to get my body waxed so she'll finally <laughs> see me how I am. And that's what happens. That's a lot of wax. I, yeah, I know. That would be a lot. That's a lot of But wax. I think it's plausible. It is. Um... But Disney <laughs> never, you know, it, perception, like I said, everybody has different perceptions, and that's great. I mean, you blink once, and then he's hairless. It's like, exactly. it's, it could have happened. Magical. It, it might have been a deleted scene. It is crazy. I bet if you look it might in, be in the Disney vault. Oh, my gosh. The wax scene of the beast. It could be in the Disney vault. I bet vault. it is. There could be lots of scrolling involved. Yeah. Well, um, he is. But you wouldn't have a woman, right? We don't see any Disney women. There are no princesses that start out as hideous, and then the man still loves her. And then she becomes, or whatever. You just don't see it. The roles don't get reversed. Bit of a double standard yes. held by society. A little bit society, of a double standard. Which we all kind of suffer from. But Okay, one last thing before we let you go, before we're going to go to our next interview here. Uh, you mentioned, actually, in class today, I took a little note today off to the side. Glad to hear you were listening. Where did you, where, I always do, I promise. <laughs> where did you go to college? Uh, as an undergraduate, I believe it was? My undergraduate degree is from Loyola Marymount University All right, in and, Los Angeles. And you said you partied with UCLA. <laughs> well, some people at UCLA. Some yes. people. So, with as much as you can say, because we realize you're a professor here, you got to keep your job. It is going to air on campus. <laughs> How was the party days at UCLA? And do you ever look back and miss them? No. 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 There's a time and well, okay, I'm gonna quote South Park here. There's a time <laughs> and place for everything. It's called college. I don't miss it at all. <laughs> Been there, done that. Part of who I am now, but it's 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 well behind me. And so. now we're moving on. We're moving on. Awesome. All right. Well, that's Robin Heath, ladies and gentlemen. Up next is Justin Shudo on the other side of this break. <laughs> you are watching WHEI TV 10. Student programming from the Media Communication Center at Heidelberg University. I'm just lying here, don't you see me? Pick me up, pick me up. If I'm lying here, See me, pick me up, pick me up. Hi, I'm Lourdes Stefan, host of Univision's Sal y Pimienta. Cancer doesn't just change the way you feel, it changes the way you look. From losing your hair, even your eyebrows, to changes in your skin and nails, cancer treatment can rob you of your confidence and self-esteem. But look good, feel better changes all that. More than 800,000 women have learned how to address the appearance side effects of cancer treatment through our workshops. Visit lookgoodfeelbetter.org to find a free workshop near you. Let Look Good Feel Better help you feel like you again. 
Welcome back to Late Night with Scott Carpenter, and I am now joined by my second guest tonight, Justin Shudo. Justin Shudo, how are you doing? I'm just great. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Living life here at the Berg. So let's learn that. a little about you. You're a student here. I am. Yes, and sir. you're a freshman. So how has college life been to you so far? You know, it's it's been it's stressful at times. It's great at times. You know, a lot of fun. You make connections with people that are going to last. You know, you can tell far beyond the college, you know, the four years typical. It's, it's, it's got its ups and downs like everything else. You know, I'm enjoying it thoroughly. There's times where, it, you know, you'd, you know, you could rather be doing a hundred other things, but you got you to gotta do it. You know, you got to grind through it. And, you know, it's a learning experience like everything Absolutely, else in life. Yeah. And yeah. there's times where you'd also rather be doing nothing else than living the college life. And Agreed. Henry, I know you know all about that. I do. So, Bashudo, um, you play golf here. So tell us a little yeah. bit about uh, the golf team, which includes, you know, your host and the co-host, which you see tonight. But tell us a little bit about the golf team and the guys on the team. Well, you know, the, the golf team is we are a unique bunch of guys, if I do say so myself. I'm, I'm actually really thankful for the golf team. Uh, you know, coming to Heidelberg, a lot of us here do play sports, and that is a great outlet for us to meet other people. And I got to admit, all my main group of friends is they're all part of the golf team. And I don't know where I would uh, if I came into Heidelberg without, you know, a sport. Who knows who I would, you know, what circle I would have ended up in. But right. I'm, I'm happy. I'm really liking the circle. But you know, the golf team is a great group of guys. You know, we go out there, we work hard, we try our best. We haven't, you know done much this first half of the season but there's the second half we've been uh they had us in the first half i'm not gonna lie yeah, they, they had us they, they did have they us in the first half <laughs> they that's had right. us in the first half that's but right the second half is still to come we're coming I out mean, the tunnel just about now i can i can definitely say we've all been putting in some work in the off season yeah so yeah. i'm uh, i'm excited to see where it takes us you know spring season's coming up just about a month away now so and, and apart from sports how are your classes going i mean What's your major, and tell us a little bit about your major and what your classes are. I am a sports management major. Um, fitness is my uh, specialty. There's three specialties here at Heidelberg. Clearly. It's, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me don't blush, blush now. now. Don't, don't yeah, come on cheeks. now. But, um, you know, I do, I take a fancy to fitness. I like to, you know, I like the whole gym aspect. Hopefully, you know, just sports in general, I have a, I take a liking to. I really... I just love to be involved in some way. It doesn't really matter what sport it is or how I'm involved. I know, you know, just at this stage in life, you kind of realize, you know, every little kid's goal, you know, I want to be a professional sports player. At this stage right. in life, I kind of realize that's, that's highly unlikely now. <laughs> so I do the next best thing, which is sports management. Anything to keep me involved in some kind of sport, I tend to favor baseball or football. But if I can get in... You know, even hockey, which I'm not a huge follower of, but just I love the environment of What's sport. What's hockey? Exactly, <laughs> right? Tell them yeah. a couple miles up north in Canada. I'll tell you exactly what I know. Is. Yeah. You know, it's all peaceful up there, so you drop a stick and a hockey I puck know. with them, and then it's they're just so, all... Yeah. They're so nice, and all of a sudden they're, they're skating on ice. And a stick and a puck, and they're yeah, nuts. It's worse than football. Need, man. Yeah. It, it really They is. go absolutely crazy. Well, shoot over. We're going to ask you a couple questions here. Me and Henry are going to go back and forth. Okay. Just some generic questions here. Dorm room chilling kind of questions. What is your favorite movie? My favorite movie, my favorite movie is by far Project X. Yeah? <laughs> Can you tell us why? <laughs> well, you know, going through high school, I came into college thinking, that right there, that's college. <laughs> <laughs> that is college. I mean, I'm not going to say I'm sadly mistaken, but, you know, it's not. Let's be real. That's a, that's a movie. That is a movie. Mm -hmm. That is highly unlikely. But I don't know, think there's a pool on Heidelberg's campus anywhere, so that kind of would yeah, take that, that out. Purpose. That does... You know, we do have that nice lake, though. Oh, you know, our that coach does shave his legs for the swim team here, even though we don't have a swim team. Yeah, Shout matter. out to Daniel Hartzell. But anyway, <laughs> thank you, coach. Continue on, Henry. Your question? Yeah, I just, I just want to know when you, you're not, you're not working out with the golf team, or you're not working out for yourself, and you're yeah. not, um, and you're not studying. What, what do you do for fun? What do you do for your free time? What do I do for free time? Well, I've become an avid PS4 <laughs> player. <laughs> Quite. I swear, you challenged me in a game of 2K, I'm ready. <laughs> Henry already knows what happens when I challenge to a game of Madden, so... Yeah, let's not get started We on don't get past my the first half normally, yeah. as I recall. I've heard. Video game yeah, I've heard. heard. I have heard. And Shudo, your 2K status, status is being being a bit challenged. No, absolutely not. No, no, are you still oh. reigning king? Or I believe so. Favorite team in 2K, favorite player in 2K? Favorite team. You know what? I'm really a fan of Portland. 
They got a lot of shooters. They do. But they do. They do. But I, you said you're reigning right now as the, the 2K champion. Damn. I would like to say that you went up 3-1 to me in a series, and now it's... 3-2. Er, <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> you won a game. Yeah, no, it's, it's okay. Henry, Henry lost everything. Henry right? has won a game since the last <laughs> meeting of 2K. <laughs> but that's all right. I mean, I'm still feeling confident. I'm, I'm up on you on a series. I'm up on you on a series. Lutz is always I'm down. up on Lutz on a series. So I'm feeling pretty... I'm on a pedestal. Pretty confident. Right so besides PS4, what else yeah, do you yeah. got? What, what else do you got for us? Well, I, d I have sushi dates every Saturday with... with uh, yours truly, ladies and gentlemen. Y yes, the man himself. And I'm thinking I might have to try some sushi. And I don't know how anybody doesn't like sushi. I mean, but... And is, is it healthy? That's my question. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's healthy, healthy for you. Yeah. Then I might have to try it. You're going to have to try Anything it. Anything to get this figure. I don't know if I'm going to anybody step on my turf. Those are my <laughs> man <laughs> on the weekend. And just so everybody knows, I'm just kidding. You're always welcome. find the Asian Grill in Finley, the best sushi ever. We found a gem. It looks closed, but it's not. <laughs> it, is, it, it is definitely yeah. open. Yeah. Well, you, you guys are they're using, still paying their electricity. They're actually so usually the you only, you, you guys are usually the only customers. It Actually, that did happen. Last, yeah, but the last weekend, it was popping. Yeah, there was like six other people. <laughs> was, yeah. It was busy. It was crazy. It was going. Shudo, if you had one uh, thing that you're looking forward to here at Heidelberg, what what is it? I mean, everybody, you know, you find your goals, your dreams, your ambitions. It all comes real in college to what you want to do. That light has shined. What, what really in your freshman year has kind of shined on you? What has shined on me already, or what am I looking forward to? What A little bit of both. Give us a, both ends of that question. Well, what has just shined already is just the... You know, the environment, the just, it's a smaller school. And what I thought I wouldn't like that, I, I've grown to like that because I feel like that has made my relationships with a few people so much stronger. Instead of having a bunch of maybe okay, meaningful, somewhat relationships, I, I think I've grown to, you know, three or four, maybe even five relationships that I feel will last well past school. Where if I went to a bigger college, I know a million people, you know, you know him when you're there, but as soon as you get home, it's like, you know, he's just a school friend. Right. I think that that is one of the great things I do love about Heidelberg is it really allows you to get close to your to your group. You're not really torn between a bunch of different people or things. It's just, it's it's all you. It's all there, and any everything's in walking distance. Mm -hmm. You know, no friend is too far. You're always you're always available. Yeah. So what what do you look forward to the most then? What I, I look forward to is just, you know, just, just coming out of here successful, just, just you know, getting, getting through the four years, putting in my, my hours, my work, and, you know, making relationships and hopefully at one point a career, you know, to be able to back up this degree that I'm working towards. Just being able to have the whole picture, to be able to, you know, in 10 years down the road, I have a, a nice job and I have good friends around me that I made and they've come through this journey with me and I've been there with them and they've been with me the whole step of the way. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the kind of the small college feels. They've been there literally every step. Pretty much. Not yeah. just, you Even know, when we're battling here and 2K. there. Exactly. Yep. You Absolutely. Know, being able to look back on that I think will be the most beneficial part of the whole Heidelberg experience. Very well said. You, I got a question for you. What's that? Ten years from now, yeah. what do you see? G give me, give me the. I mean, the house, the location. I want it all. All right. Well, ten years from now, I'm working for the Detroit Tigers organization, <laughs> in some respect, because I do favor heavily towards baseball. If I, if I have my own, uh, you know, personal choice, I'll take any option. But you know, if I have my own, this is my dream now. <laughs> and uh, you know, I got my summer home in Michigan, back with the, you know, the family and the friends. We got my, my winter home, you know, we got one down in maybe, maybe somewhere in the south. Maybe Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee. I know that's crazy for a lot of people, but I've, I've had the pleasure, the experience of living down south for a year, and I, I loved it, and I want to get back. Yeah. Um, so Southern boy at heart, huh? I, I love the southern yeah. aspect of things. You know, people think Alabama, think Hickville, <laughs> Mississippi, you know, that's where, I, that's where I was fortunate to spend a year. Uh, but I love it. You know, I, I absolutely loved it. And I would much rather live there than most people's California, Hawaii, or Florida. I, I just, there's something about it that drew me in. 
and I can't wait to get back. Yeah, you yeah. really do. You find a place and you call it home. I do. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Justin Shudo. Thank you for your time. Thank Stay you. tuned because the four of us, myself, my co-host Henry, Justin Shudo, and Robin Heaton are going to play Password on the other side of this break. I'm Tori Hasenlaub. And I'm Morgan Brandt. And, and you're, you're watching WHEI-TV10. <laughs> Student programming from the Media Communication Center at Heidelberg University. Welcome back to Late Night, ladies and gentlemen, and we are about to play Password, but first let me introduce you my guests. Playing as my teammate, they call her a badass with a PhD, ladies and gentlemen, Robin Heaton. <laughs> my teammate, all right. And playing on the other side, from Dark County to Tiffin, Ohio, the 230-pound monster and my co-host, the one and the only, Mr. Henry Bourne. Take a seat. And representing... The not so glorious uh, state of Michigan. Say it right, bro. Say it right. <clears throat> say how, how it right. Representing the glorious state of Michigan, glorious. whom we absolutely give a damn about, Justin Shudo. Absolutely. Thank you. All Thank right. You. Here we go. We're about to play pass, ladies and gentlemen. Here's how this game works. We each have hints. We each have two each. And we can give one word clues as to what our word is to each other. The team that gets the most correct will win. Your lead, sir. My, okay, oh. okay. Okay. All right. We both get a look. I believe in you, Henry. We both have the same word. You gotta keep it low. Would. Keep it low. I believe in you. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Come on. Concentrate. We got this. I, and it can only be one word. One word. You only one have word. one word. Okay, okay. Look me in the eye. I need to, I'm, I I need to feel this. You need to feel this. <laughs> yes. Uh, Justin. Henry. The word is... I need a moment to think. Can <laughs> take your time to. Say it! <laughs> Picture. <laughs> Picture says a thousand words, but doesn't it? That was a bad word, man. I know, I know. You gave me a thousand to choose from. So, what's your guess? Um, Snapchat. <laughs> oh. Incorrect. That's okay. a good guess, though. <laughs> iPhone. Selfie. Oh! Oh, I knew it. That was a point for us. Point for <laughs> us. There we go. Hey, I knew it. Starting I was off on the right foot. Nice. All right, Robin, your lead. I should have said Snapchat. Okay, so have. now we both look at the same one. Yeah, yeah you and Shudo both have the same one. Here we go. You gotta look into my eyes too. Okay, wait, I have to think first. I can't think if I'm looking in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you're so Is that dreamy? a compliment? <laughs> <Is> that... <laughs> I think that's a compliment. Um... Interpersonal. Relationship. Woo! Oh! <laughs> Yo! That's a gimme! I was listening yeah. during the interview. They had yes. a free okay. show. Discussion. Stop complaining. Ah. It's not even fair. Shudo, your lead. We're word, about to though. come back. Okay, okay, that's fine. Shudo, right. your lead. All right. Keep it little. Keep it hidden. All right, it's hidden. And you can do yours. Do well. I do mine too? Yep. Well, after he goes, if he gets it wrong, which we know he's going to get it wrong. Oh, but so. I get to look at it, right? Yes, yes. I don't know this word. Lower in good shape. Better shape. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. A 
reward. <laughs> no pressure, it's only two and a half. Oscar. I'm waiting for it. Okay. I don't know what this is. Well, you gotta come up with something. <laughs> Take a stab at it, Rob. <laughs> Can I say it rhymes with? No, no, you can't no, 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 wow. One word. One word. That's an eh. <laughs> Is it the buzzer? The buzzer didn't sound. We're still in play. Off yeah. beat. That's a hyphen. That's. Third. <laughs> uh. Yeah. That's Nickelback. <laughs> oh. <laughs> They're off beat and they never won an award, so. You think I would start with award for Nickelback? <laughs> <laughs> it was a good guess. It was right. a good guess. Whatever, okay, whatever, back to you. Whatever you helps you sleep, bud. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give, give me. Do we get another hint? Yeah, you yeah, keep going. Yeah, we keep so going. We, can give another. All right. we got one more shot at this. This one better do it. I believe in you. Okay. You believe in me? I believe in you, Shooter. Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Call me just Pride of Michigan. <laughs> okay. Just refer to me as that from now on. Heidelberg. I need you to think of the first word. I'm new. Hey, whoa, what? That's like extra that's hints. A, no, it's not. I didn't hear a buzzer. Okay, okay, okay. I didn't hear a buzzer. Okay, are we sure we have the same word? <laughs> yeah, we do. I promise you just don't know what it is. I just don't know what it is. Siggy. Yay! That's, that's, a Siggy. that's our mascot. I, I, I thought our mascot it. was a student prince. Well, he's called Siggy. His name is Siggy. <laughs> oh. I didn't know. I did not know You're that. You're new. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's understandable, <laughs> but you got to keep up with it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Now, is, is it okay. your lead or my lead? Shooto just led, correct? Yeah. Okay. So this is for two points. This is the last no, this one. Is no. the this, this is for the win. This is for the win. This is for the win. This is for a thousand points. Two points, points will make it for the win. I know you're not a math major, but two points will make it for the win. I am a comm major. I don't exactly. do that. Exactly. Hey, now. Oh. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, I can look at it, though, right? That's our lead. We got the last point. No, that's not how it works. You switch. You alternate. Uh, yeah. That's make it take it. You already did Make it take it. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. It's hard with people staring at you, huh? <laughs> Fresh. Prince. Yeah, that's what I would have said too. I got it. You better give me something better than fresh. I got I got this. one word. I got it. Alright. 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 I'm ready. Here, yeah, roll your sleeves up. Let's get real. He has any more muscles to show anyway, so <laughs> Buzz. Fresh buzz. Haircut. <laughs> That's the win, ladies and gentlemen. That's the win. winners right here. Yes. Yes. Pride of Michigan and the Pride of Dark County right here. Let's go. Thank you to our guests, Robin Eden and Justin Shudo. We will be right back to things, wrap things up, so stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. It's here. Fireside Cafe Pub's very own Heidelberger is making a scene. This juicy, succulent sandwich is waiting for you on Thursday nights at the Fireside Cafe Pub in honor of the Mike Hallett Show. Purchase a Heidelberger on Thursday from 6 to 9 p.m. to receive fries and drink for free. Oh yeah, a combo meal for free. All you have to do is purchase the Heidelberger at the Fireside Cafe Pub on Thursday between 6 and 9 p.m. Come on down to the Fireside Cafe and Pub and get your Heidelberger now, because Coach Hallett said so. Hey, what's up? I'm Bella. Yo, what up? This is Vinny Guadagnino. I'm Nick Cannon. Hi, I'm Aziz Ansari. That was your line. You can help by joining DoSomething.org. DoSomething.org. That's why I'm teaming up with DoSomething.org. <laughs> Special thanks to Robin Heaton and another special thanks to Justin Shudo for being guests on the show. Catch us again in two weeks. Henry, I had a lot of fun. It was a blast, Scott. I think we did, did a great job, you know? I, I, I had a lot of fun with it. And this is going to end with a dramatic 
staring competition. Cue dramatic music. <laughs> That doesn't work! Oh, yeah. That doesn't work! Yeah. I'm lost in everything tonight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm out of here. I'm your host, Scott Carpenter, alongside Henry Bourne, as always. Take care, Tiffin, and good night. <laughs>